my group of friends, you know, six months ago, I feel like they were hindering my walk with the Lord. So I said a prayer one night and I said, Lord, if they're not good for me, remove them. It took about two weeks and they were gone, yeah. you know. Wow. We're trying to forget about the pain, so we go to the bar and we get a drink. We go to the adventure capital of the world so we can find adventure. But my friend, today I'm here not for adventure. I'm here to find you, to let you know that there is a God in heaven who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you. That if you put your trust in him, if you believe by faith, if you understand that free gift of grace that he offers, you can be given a whole new future, a whole new reality. Your eternity can begin now where you can know every day God is in control of your life. That you can know every day that you're not alone, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. You can know every day that even if you feel broken, discouraged, depressed, and anxious, do you have a holy God who's fighting on your behalf to make your path straight? Good afternoon, Queenstown. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. When's the last time you thought about Jesus Christ or the eternal state of your soul? There are so many people walking through life that maybe go years without ever thinking about any of this, of what happens when you die. What are you consisting of? What is your future? What do you put your hope in? Not a lot of people understand that we're body, soul, and spirit. But that is the truth, my friend. Amen. That one day you're going to die, your flesh will go back to the dust of the earth, and your soul will go somewhere. It will go up, it will go down. Where will it go? How do we know? I know culturally, it is our custom, I think in many countries, to say rest in peace when someone passes away because it's the nice thing to say. And it's nice in a very obvious way, but it's not the truth. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, not everyone is resting in peace. Your flesh goes back to the dust of the earth, your soul goes somewhere else. The Bible says that one day we're all going to bow the knee, that every tongue will confess and every knee will bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. We will confess that Jesus is Lord, either now or one day in eternity. And my friend, I don't want us to lose this opportunity to truly have a purposeful life where you know that God is in control of your life, where you know that God is blessing you, leading you beside still waters, upholding you with his righteous right hand. You can know every day that God's favor is upon you. But many of us, we walk through life, we're broken, we're hurting, we're in darkness and chains. You see, this is a spiritual war that you're in. We're living in the flesh, but the war is in the spirit. Light against darkness, angels against demons, God against the devil. And it might seem like a fantasy to your mind, but it is so very real. In fact, the spirit realm is more real than this physical realm that you're in right now. I want you to consider, the Bible says that this is a shadow of things to come. You see, when we pray to God, we pray for an answer to the needs of our life. We throw out a seed, we pray in faith, we sow a seed in the spirit realm, and then we go to God and we pray, we go to God and we pray, and we don't see an answer for a season, maybe a couple of seasons. And eventually that answer is, it's given out by the Lord, but there must be a, a movement from the spirit realm to the physical realm. When God answers our prayer, it has to shift from a spiritual reality to a physical reality. You pray for some need in your life. When God answers that prayer, it must shift from a spiritual reality to a physical reality. The spirit realm is an eternal realm. The physical realm is a finite realm. One day this earth will be burnt up with fire, the Bible says. We know that there was a creation to the earth, a creation to mankind. There was a beginning and there will be an end. It's finite, but the spirit realm is infinite. There's no beginning and no end to God. And so we know that this is a shadow of things to come. This life is not as real as what's going on in the spirit. And there's a very real war that's happening between light and darkness. And I want you to just take a moment today to consider the reality of your spiritual state. To say, okay, is God real? And if he's real, what is the proof? The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God, that we are God's handiwork, that you're created in his image, 
Does it mean that we look just like him? Because the Bible says God is light and in him there's no darkness. There's a lot of darkness in us. There's a lot of sin and brokenness. A lot of heartbreak. But God is perfect in all his ways. And the perfect love of Christ casts out all fear from us. So I'm throwing a lot of scripture at you, but I want you to consider these things. That God is perfect, we are not. But we can, in our imperfections, go to a perfect God and ask him to forgive us for everything that we have done. And if we do that, he will be faithful to forgive. There is no scenario where you go to God and say, God, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. I'm sorry for my rebellion against you. And he says, oh yeah, no, like, it's not good enough. Go, go, go and do something and try again. If you go to him, he longs for your soul. If you go to him, he will wholeheartedly accept you. You cannot be good enough for God. He sent his son Jesus to die as a payment for the sin of our life, as to ransom our soul from death, to bring us into fellowship with the Father. And so he sent his son to do the work that we simply cannot do, to spare us from the wrath of God. And Jesus himself went through that. He suffered the wrath of God. His blood was poured out on that cross so that we don't have to be punished for our sins, so that we can be forgiven, made righteous through what Jesus did. We can be saved by grace through faith. We can be brought into reconciliation with the Father so that one day you can be with him for all of eternity. And I understand that many of us were trying to live our life, go our own way, have a good time. I understand that, but I just want you to take a moment today to consider these things. It doesn't require a huge investment of your time just to consider that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, gentlemen, that we've all made mistakes, that we've all fallen short, but we have a Savior who understands our pain and our needs, our spiritual state, our heartbreak, the way in which our parents failed us, neglected us, didn't love us in the way that we needed, the pain that we went through in our relationships, failed marriages, disconnections between father and son, mother and daughter, broken relationships, God can bring healing and restoration. It's a difficult life we're living. We're trying to forget about the pain, so we go to the bar and we get a drink. We go to the adventure capital of the world so we can find adventure. But my friend, today I'm here not for adventure. I'm here to find you, to let you know that there is a God in heaven who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you. That if you put your trust in him, if you believe by faith, if you understand that free gift of grace that he offers, you can be given a whole new future, a whole new reality. Your eternity can begin now, where you can know every day God is in control of your life. You can know every day that you're not alone, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. You can know every day that even if you feel broken, discouraged, depressed, and anxious, that you have a holy God who's fighting on your behalf to make your path straight. And I know that to our our flesh into our ears. Maybe some of this sounds silly or ridiculous, but I promise you, all right, some of the greatest intellectuals in the world are Christians and believers. This is not something for the ignorant. This is not something for foolish people. Those who are truly awake. What's up, man? What's up, bro? What'd you say? Oh, you're the operations manager. Look at you, bro. Oh, you all like uh, dressed up, man. I'm about to post that video soon. Oh, good. I don't yeah. recommend you post my identity online. I don't know your identity, but it's going to probably... Right. Yeah. Okay. But you see, this is what the devil can do. The devil can make a man like this with purple sunglasses doing foul gestures with his hand. Your heart is black, bro. Your heart is black. That's the truth. We're out here trying to help people, and he mocks me. He mocks my God. Why is this? Because there's evil inside of us, my friends. There is evil inside of us, and it is only taken care of by the cross, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I forgive this man for his filthy words and his evil attitude. I forgive him for doing that because I'm not out here but for maybe, what, 20 minutes at a time just to give you a message of encouragement and hope that God can fight on your behalf that he can be there for you in your time of need, that he can be a light in your darkness, a lighthouse in the midst of the stormy seas of your life, that he can help you to walk on stormy seas and to find victory. And then there are 
people that are hurting and broken. They're looking for answers, and yet they will look everywhere else but Jesus. Didn't even recognize the guy. The Bible says, For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. You see, when we're feeling anxious, when we're feeling overwhelmed, maybe you have people who are coming against you in life. You can go here and you can see that even people like King David, he was going through it. He had difficult times and he prayed to God and he gave God his anxiety, his worries, and his fears. And God, he gave him reassurance and helped him to know that, David, you are not alone. And if you go to God, you can know in your soul that you're not alone. David said, I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. I'm assuming this is a psalm of David. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous, just as this man who passed by did earlier. God is our defender. We don't need to defend our religion. I'm not out here to be anyone's enemy. I'm out here to speak the truth to encourage your soul and to help you find grace, mercy, and help in time of need. Now, if you pit yourself against God, that is a different thing. I don't need to defend him. He can defend himself. Okay? And so if you get angry about the fact that Christianity is being preached, I'm only obeying my God, maybe talk to him. Tell him that you're angry and take it up with him. He will hear you. Let the lying lips be put to silence. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which has wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications, when I cried unto thee, O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and plentifully rewards the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto, the Lord, unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. You see, my friend, it takes the blood of Jesus. We need the sacrifice of Christ to cleanse us, to cover us, to leave us spotless and blameless before God. We are not saved or made righteous through our own efforts, but we can be righteous before God. It's through surrender, by living in obedience. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit to overcome sin, to live in the Spirit of God, to live a life pleasing to Him, to turn away from rebellious attitudes and behaviors, and to... Dare I say, submit ourselves therefore unto God as a living sacrifice. Submit is a very ugly word in today's society. We don't want to submit to anyone. We want to be lifted up proud. We want to be bold and we want to put ourselves first and we want to walk in uh, self-will. God is saying, be weak. Put yourself last. Love your neighbor before you love yourself. Take care of others before you take care of your own household. This is the kingdom of God, because if we take care of others, God will take care of us. And that is the kingdom of God, that we love our neighbor just as we love ourselves. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. God will give you everything that you need if you trust in him. Run to Jesus today. The Bible says, repent, for the kingdom of God has come near to you. Unless we repent, we will all likewise perish. All that repent means we turn from darkness. We turn from sin. We turn from rebellion. We have a change of heart, a change of mind. We turn towards God. And we say, God, I hear your call. I feel your, your leading. And I'm responding in faith. Enable me to walk in faith, to overcome sin, to live for you. Make me a new creation. Give me a new heart of flesh. Take that hardened heart of stone like this other man has. He has a heart of stone, very hardened towards God. And 
very hardened in his attitudes, full of vitriol and hatred towards the things of God. Why? Because in our flesh, we are against the ways of God. But my friend, in the spirit, we can find life and freedom. If you would like prayer, please come. We would love to have a conversation. If you would like to even challenge some of our beliefs, we encourage you, come. God bless you, Queenstown. God bless you wherever you're from. Much love to you. I hope you have a wonderful time adventuring here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Got a couple of guys. God bless you, man. How are you? What's your name? What's your name, brother? Colin? Where are you from? Did I say, is it Colin? Yeah. Fiji. Oh, wow. Praise God, man. Did you see the guy walk by? Yeah. Okay, so the craziest thing, let me tell you a story. So we were in Dunedin, and uh, it's another city in New Zealand, and we were over there preaching, and he's an operations manager for the mall, for the shopping center. And we were preaching down the way, and he came out, and he was very angry. Yeah. And uh, even kind of like got aggressive. I was holding my child, and I was like, bro, you need to back up. So it was a whole thing. And uh, he was very vile and mean. And wow. Anyway, yep. so he walked by and saw us. He's here now. So <laughs> yeah. the guy's following. I, we told him we were going to be here, too. So maybe in his own way, he's we looking for us. Him that the Lord wants his soul so much, he keeps inconveniencing. Yeah. We should. Yeah, no, I didn't even think of that, but that would have been a perfect yeah. thing to say. Yeah. So if you see this mall manager guy, there's a reason why God keeps putting you in our path. Just repent, man. Stop hating God. Don't hate me. I'm just delivering the message. Hey, God bless you, bro. We're just delivering the message. Give your heart to God. It's not too late, bro. What led you to talk to us? Oh, I was actually in the jewelry store and I was just looking at some engagement rings. I hope my partner's not watching this. Oh. I was looking at engagement rings and I heard you starting to talk and I was like, you know, in, in my struggle and the bit of, you know, the struggle and the walk, I was like, you know, this is a good opportunity to listen and, you know, get the fire in my heart going again. So I came back out and I started listening and I started listening. And you see all those videos of street peaches, you know, they, they go through some tough times and it's like, I'm going to look over this man. I'm going to say a quick prayer, make sure he's safe, make sure everyone else is safe. And so I sat out there and I started watching and I started listening. And then something inside of me was just like, you've got to go talk to him, you've got to go introduce yourself, even if it's just that one line, Christ is King. But well, you were nervous. I was nervous. Yeah, I'm you still can, nervous. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> but, but it's, man, I'm going to tell you, God's going to bless your, your courage and your, your boldness. Yeah. It's yeah. not what it takes, bro. We all have um, that beginning. Can I share something with you? Yep. When I first started following Jesus, and I was in that season where I was like, God, just please use me in whatever way. Just use me. I remember uh, I was at a gas station. Um, and there was a guy with a disability in the store. And I really felt very strongly on my spirit that he wanted me to pray for this guy. And so I was like, oh, I can't do it, Lord. I don't, I don't have the, I can't do it. I'm too scared. So I went back to my truck and... Uh, it was this feeling that was overwhelming, like you could not ignore it. And so I went back to the guy, I was like, hey man, like, I'm sorry, dude, but like, can I please pray for you? And he was like, yeah, and I was like, okay, can we go outside? I wanted to take him far away from everyone so nobody could hear us. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the, the, the place I was at in that point in my life. And I took him outside and I prayed for him and it was so bad. I'm talking about, I was stumbling over my words, I probably didn't even make sense to the guy because I was so nervous. But when I got done, I got back to the truck and I said, wow, I obeyed God, you know? And that's what God wants from us. He's not wanting us to be perfect or do it with, you know, uh, like just exceptionally. He wants us to be willing and to say, God, use me. And then when he uses us over time, he's the one who makes us excellent. He's the one who enables us to do things with, um, you know, just a fire and a zeal. And uh, it, it's by his spirit, bro, by his power, because we're weak in our flesh, you know, and uh, but he has to build us up. And so I want to encourage you in that and saying that you're so much further ahead. And, and just to be able to come and have a conversation with us, it's very encouraging. And I want you to leave feeling empowered. You said earlier, right, that even just talking with us in a group, you could feel the presence of God. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I had an interesting time, so 
my group of friends, you know, six months ago, I feel like they were hindering my walk with the Lord. So I said a prayer one night and I said, Lord, if they're not good for me, remove them. It took about two weeks and they were gone, yeah. you know. Wow. And then- I've had those things happen yeah, in my life. So I was sitting there and I was going, well, <laughs> now I've got no friends. And I said, Lord, show me, you know, give me some friends that are, will help my walk with the Lord. And I got to work about two or three weeks later and I was talking to my workmate and I saw a tattoo of a cross on his arm and I said, are you a Christian? He said, sure am. And I said, I am too. So we've been going to church together for the last month. Wow, praise God. And it's as amazing. I continue to pray and say, yeah. hey God, give me some more Christian friends. You know, he gave me the courage to walk up to you guys, yeah. introduce myself and yeah. here we are. We may be from all over the world. You know, yeah. if you guys are ever these ways, hit me up. Yeah, bro.